Hello everyone. My name is Anand Bhatt and I am a senior product manager at Amazon. Uh, today I'll be talking about how to overcome imposter syndrome as a product manager. Throughout my career, I've had different phases where I've experienced imposter syndrome. And in this talk, I hope I will um, put forward those experiences and provide few tips and tricks for you to keep in mind as you experience uh, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome by definition is a feeling of inadequacy or a feeling of not being enough in your role and responsibility. Um, I started off as a software developer and transitioned into a product manager. So I would say this is sort of a traditional path to being a product manager. Despite that, I have experienced a lot of uh, imposter syndrome during this transition and even after I transitioned into product management. So I can see that different phases of um, my product management journey, I've had imposter syndrome kicking me uh, hard. And um, in that process, I've learned a lot about myself and um, what works for me and what doesn't work for me. So hopefully uh, this talk will provide you with some information um, in, in this regard. A little more uh, background about myself. I started off as a computer science undergrad, um, transitioned into software engineering. Given that I had the same background, um, helped me a lot. And so the first year, two years of uh, my software engineering was more about learning um, and uh, understanding how uh, software engineers work in the industry. Two years down the line, I realized that software engineering was not for me. And so I started doing PM-ish stuff um, within Honeywell. I enjoyed writing system requirements, testing, um, and basically owning end-to-end -end product um, development lifecycle. Um, and this kind of ambiguity gave me a lot of excitement. Uh, and that was something that I really enjoyed. Next, I transitioned to do uh, go back to school and do my uh, MBA. Um, this was a period of a lot of ambiguity, um, a different kind of ambiguity because um, I was um, going back to being a student, learning a lot of new uh, stuff, which kind of made me uncomfortable. I took a stab at consulting and quickly realized that consulting was not for me. And so I um, decided to double down on product management. The good thing in uh, uh, being anxious as, um, as I was doing uh, MBA was that I had a group of students who were in the similar situation. And so um, I felt less anxious um, during this time. At the same time, given that I was um, back to being a student, um, failure was part of learning and there was no downside or risks of failing as opposed to uh, one failing um, while at work. And so it really did not bother me that I was working or I was learning something uh, amb ambiguous and I would eventually fail at it as well. So. Um, there was a little bit of anxiety or uh, imposter syndrome, uh, but I would say um, there was more to come later on in my career. Um, during this time, uh, I got an opportunity to intern at Amazon as a product manager. And it was during this time where uh, my imposter syndrome was uh, at its peak. It was a 12-week internship, and all throughout the 12 week, I felt really judged. Um, I had huge confidence issues on whether I would be able to deliver um, at Amazon, um, a top company, uh, and whether or not I was worthy of um, even being there. I always had this feeling that uh, people would figure out that um, 
I became a PM intern at Amazon as a fluke. Um, and I had this feeling of uh, not being deserved uh, in, in the role. I'd say at the end of 12 weeks, um, this feeling of anxiety got the better of me. I did not convert my PM internship into a full-time role. And um, at the end of it, um, I was um, less anxious and more analytical in understanding what went wrong. And it is during this time that I learned of imposter syndrome um, as, as a thing. Um, so I did a little bit of um, soul searching. I went back to um, my MBA, finished my courses uh, and was looking for a full-time role. Um, and back in my mind, I always had this feeling of what went wrong, what could have, could I have done better? Uh, and it boiled down to me uh, concluding that I had to be a lot less anxious. I did not want to be in that situation, situation of um, um, self-doubting myself. And so I had that feeling in my mind um, and prepared for um, searching a full-time product manager uh, role going forward. So next, um, for the next couple of years, I quote unquote was a product manager uh, for different companies. So I joined a, an early stage startup called Gallup.ai. Um, there, the product management was um, a really uh, scrappy role where I had to do a lot of different things. The role there lasted for um, three months and I eventually switched to um, a PMO role at Amadeus. Now, this was far away from product management. Um, PMO was a project management office. And um, I had to do a lot of um, presentations, uh, Excel tooling, project management, and support different teams. So it was during this time where I really questioned myself on whether PM was uh, a product management was the thing for me. Um, I did not necessarily enjoy the role, so I knew that uh, these roles were really transitioning, uh, transitionary in the long scheme of things in my life. But at the same time, I was wanted to, to um, kind of get back to product management eventually because I liked the true essence of product management, which was um, defining problem statements um, and providing solutions um, with the customers in mind sort of something that I had done back um, at Honeywell. Um, at the long, during this time, I got an opportunity uh, to interview again at Amazon, uh, this time as a product program manager. Uh, I, uh, with my past experience, um, I was able to crack the interview again. And then so uh, I joined as a program manager uh, program manager was a different kind of a role um, and I eventually wanted to uh, take a stab again at being a product manager at Amazon and so I transitioned into product manager um, in uh, May of 2021. Um, so I've been a product manager at Amazon um, since then and um, I have um, not only transitioned into being a product manager, but also have been promoted into a senior product manager. Um, and so I feel the past few years have given me uh, a lot of confidence, a lot of um, applications of my past experience um, that have helped me set myself up for success uh, into um, being a good product manager, a confident product manager within Amazon. So. This has been my overall background. Um, a little ca uh, note further is, um, I don't know if you uh, know of uh, Myers-Briggs personality test. Uh, I'm a, a, a fan uh, of it and I am an ISTJ, which stands for 
introverted um, sensing, thinking, and uh, judging. Um, if you want to learn more, uh, do Google this up. Uh, it's it's fun and it's interesting, um, and, and at the same time, it um, provides a lot of interest, um, like interesting facts about uh, your personality type. All right, uh, getting back into uh, imposter syndrome. Um, what I've done here is I've just kind of expanded the role of um, um, any um, product manager um, and a typical PM life cycle um, in any um, organization. And this is more relevant, I think, for PMs in, uh, in, a, in a company as big and as um, um, fast paced as Amazon. So a typical expectation of a product manager onboarding would be like um, you would join a particular team, you would shadow or learn from different stakeholders, you would deliver uh, different results along the way, and you would uh, get buy-in and earn trust of different stakeholders, and eventually you would get to an effectiveness of 100% at the end of, um, let's say, 12 months. So that's your expectation. Um, the reality is you um, kind of start onboarding and along the way you are thrown different challenges by um, your stakeholders and you're expected to solve them or um, find solutions to them um, and you fail along the way. And so the reality is somewhat of a zigzag kind of uh, uh, a, a graph uh, as opposed to a parabolic graph where you kind of incrementally learn and deliver results and you're um, iteratively adding on to your job effectiveness. And so this zigzag effect um, or uh, deviation from your uh, expectation kind of adds on to uh, anxiety and a feeling of uh, not being worthy of the particular position you are in. And so this affects your happiness, this affects your confidence. And so on the right, um, just adding on to the same chart, um, I would say that uh, your feeling of confidence kind of dwindles and uh, there's ebbs and flows to it uh, during different phases. And so um, the gap between expectation and reality, um, as it expands, there's more self-doubt and there's more um, imposter syndrome kicking in um, as you carry out your day-to-day um, -day or month-to-month -month task. So that's a typical PM life cycle, I would say. Uh, and so the takeaway here is imposter syndrome is something that you um, have to manage a uh, product manager role is a role of um, a lot of ambiguity. And so you need to be comfortable with that feeling of ambiguity, um, a feeling of not knowing a, um, a lot of things in, in, in the scope of your product. Um, at the same time, um, providing meaningful insights and providing um, a working backward solutions to your product. And so, Whenever there is this gap between your expectation of where you should be as a product manager in your team versus where you are, um, it is important to be super self-aware of um, uh, the fact that um, onboarding or working towards being a good product manager is a non-linear or a non-iterative journey and there are going to be failures. Um, uh, and so knowing that, helps you in managing and recognizing imposter syndrome and the feel, this feeling of anxiety. Um, adding on to this, um, you get imposter syndrome during different phases of your PM career. In mine, when I transitioned from being a software developer um, to taking up MBA and then taking up full-time PM roles, um, 
you have this classic chicken and egg problem where uh, you don't have a lot of PM experience on paper, but at the same time, uh, you need to crack into PM roles while those PM roles expect some level of experience uh, in product. And so uh, interviewing uh, for PM roles, uh, getting the domain knowledge when uh, in different domains that you want to uh, get your foot into when you don't have those domain uh, knowledge uh, is where imposter syndrome can kick in big time. Now, when you transition into a PM role, uh, you have your daily PM um, expectations or roles of um, coming up with problem statements, pitching these I different ideas to different stakeholders, earning their uh, buy-ins, influencing different teams, uh, involving in uh, technical discussions um, with different teams and understanding their agenda and finding common ground. So all of these require... Uh, a lot of soft skills and hard skills. Um, and so during these uh, different phases of your PM uh, um, skills as well, PM life cycle, uh, you tend to have different degrees of uh, imposter syndrome too. Uh, another thing, I think the last bottom couple of uh, factors that affect uh, a lot in anxiety and imposter syndrome as a product manager are arc changes. Uh, one thing that I've learned um, in my current role is your team um, and your manager and your skip level manager um, set you up for success uh, and um, managers play a big role in um, uh, either making or breaking your uh, PM career. And so when you have managers moving in and out of your team, you have leadership moving in and out of your team, it is super important to be um, aware of that change, aware of the new leaders and new managers coming in and um, making sure that you have a good um, communication style with different types of leaders uh, so that you um, earn their trust in short term and long term and make sure that org changes do not affect your product journey or your growth journey. The second thing in org changes is basically understanding the role of the product team in the org that you work in. This is a little bit of a tricky thing because as you join a new team, you go in with this expectation based off of your interview, the questions and the interactions you had with uh, the different team members in the interview. And you have this idea of what this product team is. Eventually, over six to 12 months, you um, get different aha moments and you uh, get to a point where uh, you now know uh, you have a reality of uh, what the product team is and it's quite different from what you had thought um, when you joined uh, during day one. And so there is this uh, moment of realization or um, a feeling that this is not something that you had uh, when you had joined. And uh, that is a normal feeling. Um, a lot of product teams and product uh, management orgs um, uh, have different realities as you uh, gain more experience uh, in them, as you understand the politics of different stakeholders and teams, and you get familiarized with it. And the final factor is uh, pretty relevant in 2023. It's um, the effects of uh, post-COVID, um, this different dynamics of working from home versus returning to office. Um, and due to macroeconomic conditions, um, this pending uh, doom of layoffs in big tech. Um, all these factors uh, kick in uh, anxiety um, and imposter syndrome to different degrees uh, in, in, in my career. Now, a more traditional uh, uh, factor or more interpersonal factor where imposter syndrome kicks in or anxiety uh, kicks in is 
when uh, you work with different types of uh, personalities in within your org so this is a textbook uh, definition or classification of different types of personalities you uh, and this could be one of uh, one of these traits could be you as well as one of these traits could be your manager or skip or different stakeholders and so um anxiety or different um levels of imposter syndrome kicks in when um you have disagreements when you have conflicts and the personality styles of um the people that you have conflict or diff- uh, arguments with are of different personalities and it rubs off uh, differently for different people uh i personally my personal take is is that there is always going to be um a feeling of tension when you disagree or when you have conflict with um your stakeholders and that is a normal thing um i always go in with this um understanding that everybody in in my team or uh, with whom i interact with are there to solve pr- a particular problem or a pain point and so the path that that we choose to solve could be different uh what is important or what has helped me kind of uh make peace with this uh, feeling of anxiety uh, is uh, that knowing that the paths might be different and it's okay to take different paths in different situations depending on how passionate i am with those solutions um so uh, that has helped me a lot um in dealing with different personalities and taking the personalities out of the problem Uh, and focusing more on the problem has helped me kind of um get back uh, into uh, being a good product manager and not really worry about um the tension that i uh, get uh, or that I, that i sense when i disagree or i have a conflict with um, my peers all right um now that we have spoken about when imposter syndrome can kick in um i now want to focus on what has helped me personally so in the macro looking at my product management career um i feel some of these factors are super relevant or super important for me to um help me uh, forge ahead in my pm journey so knowing my pm style so it's super important for me being an introvert um to know that i in different c- circumstances might not be a type a product manager or the go getter kind of a product manager and um i've gotten this feedback that i am more of a laid back uh, more of a deep thinker uh, sort of product manager who takes a pause in before providing uh, any sort of recommendation or opinion so that has helped me a lot in being comfortable with who i am and also choosing and picking picking the kind of pm roles that i want to uh, be in at the same time the teams that i want to operate in um just to cross reference this um i um highly recommend you look at another product school uh, video that's um, how to be a successful type b personality pm I've watched it a couple of times and um uh, the talk really gave me uh, some good sense on how I need to basically embrace some of the core uh, beliefs that I have and not try to run behind a quote and quote ideal definition of a product manager and try to fit myself into those definitions. um some of the things that have also um helped me in um, make being myself uh, uh into a better space is understanding that i'm more of an introvert than an extrovert uh in different phases of my career i have inclined more towards being a scrappy product manager that is working off of mlps and uh, really developing something from scratch whereas in some phases i've i've been more uh, of um, an enterprise product manager where i worked on integrations and that has given me more satisfaction so it really is uh, 
boils down to you knowing where you are as a PM and what makes you uh, excited and what makes you really uh, run away from uh, from it um, and having a healthy balance of uh, of both kind of um, helps you grow at the same time uh, be grounded to your uh, basic feelings second thing is um, this is an important one is finding your support group um, your manager um, definitely is one person you spend a lot of time with um, in your organization. And so uh, finding a right fit of your manager ha has helped me a lot in not only just growing as a product manager, but also being really calm and um, um, being in the same frequency as well, just one other person in the team. In Amazon, I've had the fortune of working with uh, different managers of different styles. And I can say that uh, striking a chord, building a rapport with your manager uh, early on and being uh, transparent about what you like doing and what you don't like doing kind of helps set that uh, expectations of uh, what type of product manager you are. Um, in the short term and in the long term, uh, it helps uh, you and your manager build uh, different tracks where you want to grow in, into spe specific molds of product manager for, for the team. So uh, developing a good rapport with your manager is one thing. The second thing is finding mentors, coaches within your org, outside your org and basically Finding a, a support system is another important thing that I realized recently, and that's a, that's something I've been working towards. Uh, mentors and coaches help you a lot, um, even though um, initially I was of the opinion that um, they did not matter a lot. So, one example I would say is uh, I am. My org recently uh, underwent um, a lot of changes. We had new leadership coming in and uh, my mentors kind of helped me guide in setting up a, a, a good uh, transitionary um, plan for, uh, for myself and for my manager who was new to the team in um, basically building uh, a good rapport with the manager. So my mentors provided me with good guidelines, uh, which I blindly followed, and that eventually uh, led me to have a good relationship uh, within my art. Um, similar to that, um, I think uh, getting support from uh, online product forums uh, has helped me in not only tracking different interviews, but also learning more about different orgs, learning more about different companies and their product cultures. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are uh, doing this, so I would continue to uh, do that practice and be super aware of um, the teams and the orgs that you're getting in. The other thing is, uh, as you grow as a product manager, you kind of develop your own personality as a product manager. And so you have sort of preferences uh, or pet peeves of uh, product cultures that you want to go towards uh, versus that you want to go away from. And so I would say spend some time um, once in a year trying to understand how you have grown, what are the things that you like as a product manager and what are the things you don't like as a product manager and uh, develop some set of solid non-negotiables that you don't want to um, uh, cross in your team or in your product um, um, org. This has helped me walk away from um, job opportunities, uh, identifying uh, red flags during my interviews um, and at the same time realizing that if something that doesn't really excites me anymore I shouldn't be just uh, jumping teams and so that definition kind of helps you walk away from 
uh, really poor product cultures, uh, poor product definitions that you have developed for yourself uh, that eventually uh, prevents you from getting anxiety or a feeling of uh, imposter syndrome in the long term. Uh, the final piece on the macro level, I would say that, um, and this is something that I uh, cover in the micro as well, is that um, what I've learned through my different experiences of imposter syndrome is that you always will have uh, this feeling of anxiety kicking in different phases of your career. And so it is super important to plan for failure and fail gracefully whenever you do. And so um, I am a fan of saying, I don't know, but I will find out, um, which oftentimes uh, isn't the case as you um, get in, get started in your journey of product manager, um, where uh, you've been taught to not uh, say, I don't know, or at least uh, not come off as a novice. Um, I, for one, I am um, vocally self-critical when I fail. And even when I don't fail, I always uh, look for things where, um, uh, look for white spaces in my career and in my projects and, and try to see where I could have done better and share it with my team. This has helped me keep grounded. At the same time, help my teammates recognize that um, I am honest in my assessment of success and failures. Um, that has helped me um, build good trust channels with my teammates. The second thing is, I think this is an obvious, not necessarily for product management, but for anyone uh, starting a career, is not to compare yourself with others, but to compare yourself with your past. Um, in retrospect, I can say that I have grown tremendously as a product manager. Um, and um, that has helped me reinforce um, this feeling that um, I have grown so much and going forward, um, working on different challenges or challenging myself under different uh, problem domains or problem statements will only allow me to grow um, than uh, make me more anxious. So that feeling uh, uh, has helped me um, identify different growth patterns and trajectories in my past. And, and that has helped me not be afraid of taking, taking up new challenges. Uh, coming to the micro, and, and this is the final piece, um, I would say in your day-to-day -day, uh, activities or tasks, uh, focus more on getting things done um, than getting things done perfectly. Ask others um, whenever you have a big product uh, event, let's say a product launch or um, you're presenting um, an idea to different stakeholders, um, at the end of it, um, do ask for feedback. Ask how, how did the meeting go with your peers? Ask with your stakeholders or your uh, managers how um, how do they feel about the direction that you're taking this particular project in? So constantly getting that uh, validation or um, uh, confirmation from your peers and managers helps you understand or reinforce that you're either going in the right path or you're not going in the right path. So the next logical step would be, let's discuss how to um, build a path to green. Uh, the next thing is, Whenever you're, um, you're stretched uh, too much, demand support from your manager, ask help from your peers. Uh, be sure to offer help uh, to anybody as well, but uh, uh, I'm sure your teammates will help you uh, in setting you, you and your team up for success. In this last year, I'm, I, have, I have taken help from my teammates shamelessly in different occasions. And so in retrospect, I felt um, those moments of uh, assistance have helped me a lot in um, managing my time and at the same time not feeling anxious and not being up at night. Um, reiterating the same point that I've made in the previous slide, plan to fail uh, before any big product event. 
um, that will help you fail gracefully. Uh, at the same time, have different contingency plans on on uh, when things fail. Uh, so failure is not really a surprise at that point. Uh, it's always something that you anticipated, and um, it's just a, a normal part uh, of your uh, product outcome. So these were some of the micro um, tips um, that have helped me um, come uh, come out um, more successfully when it comes to a feeling of anxiety or imposter syndrome. So I hope these tips um, at a high level and at a low level help, have helped you. Uh, the, the last couple of points I want to make is uh, imposter syndrome, uh, not necessarily for a product manager, but for anybody in any um, phases of their life is mostly a manifestation of our own mind. Um, as we uh, grow in different uh, phases of our career, we have different expectations of ourselves. And sometimes the reality might uh, be different and um, that manifests into imposter syndrome. Now, specifically on product manager roles, uh, because this is um, this deals with a lot of ambiguity, um, that brings in a, a degree of imposter syndrome. So um, there is no such thing as um, overcoming imposter syndrome, at least for me, I would say. Um, I've come um, to the conclusion that you will always have imposter syndrome to some degree and being aware of it and trying to mitigate it in some way by asking help or by uh, developing different mechanisms is the way to go. So hopefully this has uh, been informative for you and um, hope you had a good time learning about me and my experience and uh, imposter syndrome. Thank you for your time.